when I joined the Army, I was uh, 17 years old. And uh, after I joined, fortunately, I was uh, stationed in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, uh, I worked in a Signal Corps, a General MacArthur Signal Corps photographic laboratory. And uh, it was very um, enjoyable and uh, educational experience for me at that time. My uh, parents came from Japan, of course, and uh, born in Japan, and my dad came from Sapporo, and my mother from the Yokohama area. So I was able to visit uh, the Yokohama area where my, uh, and I met uh, her mother and uh, her brother, and uh, they took me around the Yokohama area and showed me the city. I never got a chance to go up to Sapporo, but uh, my father's brothers came down from Sapporo and visited me. I remember they were bringing down a shaken, uh, dried uh, salmon, uh, which I didn't know what to do with because, you know, I, <laughs> the way of cooking it. So I hung it up in my locker and all the other soldiers started saying, Ken, what's that smell I smell? It's kind of like rotten fish. <laughs> uh, what I finally did was gave it to uh, my uh, mother's family in Yokohama uh, so they could use it. But I had no way of cooking the, the dry uh, shake. The fact that I was assigned to a signal corps and, uh, uh, you know, it was a photographic unit, I kind of got interested in photography. And there was also a lieutenant uh, in that unit, Lieutenant Akimoto, uh, Nisei officer. And uh, he said, you know, if you're really interested in photography, uh, you should look into USC. They have a very good film school. And that's what actually got me started. Otherwise, uh, without that experience, I don't know. I think my father wanted me to be either an engineer or probably an engineer. But uh, the fact that this Lieutenant Akimoto uh, said, you know, I should look into the film school. That's how I got started in the, what you might call the filmmaking career of mine. And eventually into teaching here at the USC. Well, I taught basically my, uh, what you might call the major part of filmmaking that I taught was sound recording. But I did teach some general classes about filmmaking that combined the editing and you know, the other aspects of filmmaking. I think SC has kind of a, at least in my estimation, a theory that you should learn all the elements and then in your upper division focus on what you're most interested in. But at least you have a basic background, understand what the other areas are composed of, which I think is good because it makes you a more, uh, you know, whatever field you decide to uh, work in, you have a background of what filmmaking in its entirety involves. We received an Academy Award for a documentary film that we made called The Face of Lincoln, which was kind of a life history of Abraham Lincoln. And uh, on that film, uh, I was the, uh, w there were two sound people, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dan Wiegand and myself, which composed the sound crew. And uh, the film was made in 54, and I think we received the award in 55. Well, in other words, uh, I think the memo part was not, you know, I knew he was a good student at the time he was taking classes, but what, uh, let's say, impressed me the most was that after he started his Lucas Film Company, I asked him to come down and be a guest lecturer in my classes. And he would come down and uh, lecture and be very informative and helpful to the students. And uh, that really impressed me that 
even after leaving school and being in business, he would take the time to come down and be a guest lecturer in my classes. My office mate is a gentleman by the name of Tom Holman, and he's quite a well-known uh, engineer in film industry. He and uh, one year after George uh, started up his company, he, I was on sabbatical leave, and he asked, George Lucas asked me to come up and uh, take my sabbatical leave at Lucasfilm. And the person I was, uh, uh, had the pleasure of working with was Tom Holman, who was the chief engineer of Lucasfilm at that time. And, uh, you know, that was really a, a tremendous experience for me during that sabbatical, was working for Lucasfilm with Tom Holman. And later on, Tom Holman, uh, you know, came down to SC and is now teaching there. In fact, that's why he and I are in the same office. We've known each other for a long time. Well, basically, uh, I told you my title right now is a Professor Emeritus and uh, our Executive Director of Special Projects. Anything comes up uh, that uh, the Dean feels should need some uh, guidance in the area of Special Projects, uh, uh, that's what I do. Uh, the one that's, uh, you know, was uh, very, uh, what you might call it, uh, rewarding was the one that we did for a uh, Mr. Sada in Japan. This was about uh, oh, 10 years ago. And we did a, uh, uh, some work for him, which he uh, uh, gave quite a considerable amount of money back to the school, uh, which helped out a lot. And uh, basically what we did for Mr. Sada was his uh, parents were ambassadors to China way back and uh, all the footage that the uh, people that were working for the uh, office, uh, embassy office in China from Japan, uh, he had and he wanted us to go over it and actually at that time I was videotaping, videotaping because the film would not last forever. So. We've done a, a number of things uh, for Mr. Sada, which uh, helped him and helped us too financially with his gifts. Uh, my wife passed away nine years ago, Mary Jane, and uh, I have two daughters, Lisa and Karen. and. Uh, I have two grandchildren. One uh, with my younger daughter, Karen, is a girl named Malia. And uh, my other daughter, Lisa, has a grandson called uh, Tyler. And uh, that's one of my, what you might call, enjoyments at the present time. Uh, my wife having passed away, I uh, have my two grandchildren to uh, enjoy and my two daughters that, uh, you know, I uh, visit. And uh, it, uh, otherwise, uh, I don't know what I'd be doing, <laughs> especially after my wife passed away. She takes swimming lessons every week, and I watched her uh, on Saturday afternoons. And quite an experience to watch them learning how to swim. <laughs> <laughs>